So, hello everyone. Uh, hope you all are doing well. Uh, my name is Mukh Bansal and I'm a postdoc at Interdigital Research and Innovation Lab in a city of France called Rennes. And I worked uh, in the area of geometry processing and computer vision. And at the moment, uh, I'm involved with a project named Digital Double, where the idea is to mimic a real world character virtually. And there are several aspects of it. Uh, for example, how to represent a virtual object, uh, how to represent its movement or deformation, and how to interact with its surrounding. So in this session, uh, I'm going to focus on how to formalize the motion or deformation of a virtual object, and which is known as shape deformation. Before we start, uh, I just want to uh, mention a couple of things regarding this session. So this session is more inclined towards a hands-on session, and I don't int intend to bombard you with a lot of content. Uh, rather, my aim is uh, that by the end of this session, you should be able to implement basic shape deformation algorithms. And to make it interesting, we are going to have two lab sessions, uh, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Uh, we are going to use Python and LibIGL for the labs. Uh, if you have used LibIGL before, uh, then it's good. Uh, if not, then no worries, because we are only going to use LibIGL uh, for displaying the results uh, on not much computation. For everything else, we are going to use Python and MP. Also, mm, all of us know how boring an online session can be, so you can try to make it interesting by asking questions. Uh, and you can use the chat window in the uh, to post any question you might have. Okay, so let's just start with shape deformation and what is shape deformation. So in the figure, you can see two digital representation of an octopus. Uh, in these representations, the tentacle shown in red is at different positions. So we call both representations as deformed version of each other. Uh, uh, it is possible uh, to deform any given object in numerous ways. And it is this process of deformation that we want to math model mathematically. Now to gain more insight, let me give you an example from the demo uh, domain of animation. So let's assume that we have a 3D object, a humanoid in this case, and we want to generate an animation of this object performing some action. Let us say that these are the sequence of poses needed to generate uh, the animation. So in red, you have the reference object, the given model, and in greens, we have the deformed model at different point of time. Now, typically, a digital artist designed these poses given the reference model. But uh, this is an involved process and it demands a huge amount of time even to generate a single pose. So to reduce the required time, a set of these poses are selected as keyframes. So these, let's say these are the keyframes. And now only these keyframes are designed by the digital artist. Once uh, uh, the keyframes has been selected, uh, the intermediate poses between these selected keyframes are generated by an interpolation process, which is usually faster. Now, in order to generate keyframes, the digital artists are supported by interactive tools to deform the reference model. This process is called interactive shape deformation. Typically, certain portion of the reference model called handles are selected and moved around to get the desired pose. Uh, so for this example, this is the reference pose. These are the keyframes which we have selected. And the green markers on the reference pose represent the control handles which are being moved 
uh, to different points in order to get the desired pose. Uh, for this uh, task, a variety of methods exist, uh, which can be divided into two classes, uh, namely direct methods and variational methods. Uh, for variational methods, based on the final position of the handles, an energy is minimized uh, uh, based on the geometry of the reference model, which gives us uh, the desired deformed model. While in direct methods, a rig is used to achieve the deformation of the reference model. And we are going to discuss it in more detail. Uh, once we have the keyframes, an interpolation algorithm is used to generate the intermediate poses. So the idea is to generate these intermediate poses given these two keyframes and while preserving certain geometric properties. So we would want to preserve the shape of the reference model uh, such that the intermediate poses also looks like um, from the same class. Now these interpolation algorithms are also inspired by shape deformation algorithms. Repeating this process will provide us the desired animation. So this interpolation is for the first pair of keyframes. Then this uh, interpolation is for the second pair of keyframes. And then if you combine both, you get your desired animation, the final sequence of the animation. So today we are going to see different frameworks to generate these keyframes and hopefully implement them. So let us start with a direct method properly known as skinning. There are three components of any skinning framework. First one is a control structure. A control structure provides an interface for specifying the movement for the different part of the reference model. And the control structure defines what kind of motion or deformation the reference model can exhibit. So a control structure can consist of different type of control handles. The first one is the point handles. So point handles are the points on the reference models, which can be moved freely in space. And this setup is similar to the setup of a puppet. Uh, if you have seen a puppet show before, uh, where you choose some points on the puppet and you attach strings to those points and then you move uh, these strings. And then the puppet moves as the string moves. Typically, these point handles are useful for object uh, with no rigid structure, uh, for example, the uh, octopus. But quite often, uh, there are parts of the reference model which exhibit rigidness. So in other words, these parts can only rotate or translate, while stretching and bending of these parts are not allowed. So, for example, limbs of humanoid model will fall into this class of uh, objects. So, for these parts, a bone handle is used. So, bone represents that it is not going; to, it can only rotate and translate, but it uh, you cannot stretch or bend a bone. Now, in case the reference model can only exhibit local rigid motion, a more elaborate structure called a skeleton is used. The skeleton is, is a combination of connected bones such that the motion of the bone has some impact on the connected bones. So for example, if you move this bone over here, uh, we might want to apply the same motion on, the, on, on this bone over here. The point where two bones are connected uh, is known as a joint. And most of the time, the, the uh, 
the motion is specified with respect to these joints. Uh, skeletons are very popular control structures uh, in motion design and tracking applications uh, related to humanoids and cord ropes. Uh, and automatic uh, skeleton computation is a huge topic in itself. Uh, interested people can read a very nice survey by Tagliasachi over here. Finally, another interesting choice of control structure is keys handles. Uh, the idea is to constrain the space around the reference model using cages. The deformation or the motion is applied on the cage vertices, which in turn is transferred to the space inside the cage. And it is completely possible to mix different kinds of control structures. And most of the time, such is the case. Also, the control structure is defined based on geometrical structure of the given reference model. So in that sense, it's a personalized setup. So if you have a different reference model, you might need a different control structure. Uh, to keep things simple, we are going to use point and bone um, handles most of the time in this session. Now, second component of the skinning is the weights. Weights represent the influence of the control structure on different parts of the reference model. Now, for example, uh, now for each handle in the control structure, you need to define a region of influence. For example, one would not want a uh, point handle P to have any impact on any other part of the reference model other than the palm. Or in other words, if we move point handle P, and then the only region near to the point P1 should move. Similarly, for point P2, uh, the region of influence should be in the vicinity of point P2. The strength and the region of influence of a control handle is specified by a weight function, uh, which is defined over the reference model. So for each uh, control handle, one weight function is defined. So assuming uh, the reference model is represented by a mesh, and I hope you have you all have seen a mesh till now. Uh, the weight function is defined for all the mesh vertices. In the figure, the strength of the influence is captured by the brightness of the cover and color. So for example, the weight function for point P is highest at point P and it gradually decreases as we move away from the point, so in this direction. Similarly, the weight function for point two is maximum at point two, and then it decreases as we move away from the point. So it decreases in, the, in this direction as well as in the, this direction. Then we have weights for bones. Uh, so where, uh, for example, bone B1, uh, this region has more or less same weight value, but uh, the weight decreases as we move away from the bone. Uh, so we can define, define weight functions for any control handle, and it's a topic of research again. So a lot of research goes into how to define weights, and we are going to see some type of uh, weight functions later in, the, in this session. So. Uh, a control structure combined with these weights is also called a rig. Now, once the control structure is defined, one can specify the desired motion or deformation using transformation on the control structure. 
for each handle uh, of the control structure, be it a point handle, a bone, or a cage, a transformation is defined. Typically, a rigid transformation, for example, a rotation and a translation is used. But depending on the requirement, scaling and shear transform transformations can also be used. Uh, let us assume that we have a skeleton as the control structure. Then in, a skeleton in green shows the initial configuration uh, of the control structure, while the Con, uh, the skeleton in green shows the final configuration. So T1 is the transformation for bone B1. So this is the transformation which you want to apply on bone B1. And in this case, it's, in this particular example, it's a rotation transformation. Similarly, Tj is a transformation for bone Bj. And you can define, uh, you have to define a uh, transformation for each bone uh, uh, or each control handle in the control structure. Also, so you can see that there is only one bone which goes under some change. So if there is no change uh, in the control structure on the handle, an identity transformation is used. So in this case, uh, transformation corresponding to bones other than B1 uh, are all identity transformations. And as B1 is the only transformation which is move, uh, B1 is the only bone which is moving, so we are only going to need uh, the weight function corresponding to B1. And then if you apply it on the reference model, you can see an intuitive motion happening. So this was the initial configuration of the hand, and then this is the final uh, configuration of the hand. So you can see that um, the motion corresponds to the motion of uh, the control structure in some sense. And this case is easy because there is only one active bone. Uh, there could be scenarios where a part of the reference model is influenced by multiple control structure, multiple control handles. There, the transformation acting on a particular part is blended before applying on the part. And uh, by blending, I mean uh, uh, the blending simply can be seen as a weighted average of transformations. And there are multiple ways of blending transformation and Again, we are going to see some of them. So now we need to formalize things a bit before we move ahead. Uh, in, Q, in case you have any question, you can ask, uh, and otherwise we will move ahead. Assuming that there are no questions, let's start formalizing things. So the reference model is represented by a mesh with uh, n vertices v i's uh, are going to represent the vertices where i varies from 1 to n and there is no constraint on the topology of the mesh so it can be a triangular mesh a quad mesh a hybrid one or maybe a volumetric mesh whatever mesh you have uh, now let's assume that the control structure consist of uh, M control handles. And we are going to represent control handles by H subscript J, where J varies from one to M. Again, these control handles can be point handles, bones, or cages. Uh, for each control handle, as we have discussed, uh, we have a weight function defined on each vertex of the mesh. So Wij represents the weight of jth handle for ith vertex of the mesh. Uh, Subuk, so yes, sir. Uh, there is a question by Dignish in the chat. I guess you are interested in 
Vignesh, maybe you can speak out. Yeah. Vignesh, are you there? Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, am yes. I audible? Yes. Okay. Uh, no, no. I uh, I missed that technical term you said for control ha handles and weights. I was making uh, notes so I am sorry. It's called rig. R I G rig. rig. Okay. 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 So, thanks. Okay. So. So weight functions, uh, uh, weight functions are defined for each handle uh, and for each vertex of the mesh. So WIJ uh, represent the weight of Jth handle uh, for Ith vertex of the mesh. Uh, for each uh, control uh, handle, uh, one transformation is defined and these transformations are represented by tj again j varies from 1 to m now using skinning for each point on the mesh uh, let's say we choose point vi the transformed or deformed vertex v dash uh, vi dash is given by this expression now let's decode it so W I J over here is the weight of handle H1 at vertex V I. T1 is the transformation corresponding to handle H1. So essentially what we are doing over here is that uh, we take transformations for each handle, apply it on the vertex V I and then take a weighted average of it. Or we can think about it the other way around. So uh, we take weighted average of all the transformations and then we apply it on the vertex VI. This weighted average of transformation is also known as blending of transformations. So in the simplest case, one can just take a linear average, linear weighted average just like in this case and the resulting screening framework is known as linear blend screening so we are going to implement it but before that uh, let's take a look uh, uh, more closely on certain concepts which we have seen till now so as we have seen till now that the importance of weights uh, is very uh, i mean weights are very important in the skinning framework let's took uh, let's take a look at some simple ways to define these weights so defining weights uh, is not a trivial process traditionally a digital artist design or paint weights uh, to get the desired deformation and this process is based on trial and error so the digital artist would paint the weight then perform skinning and then check out the result and see if there are any problematic regions. And if there are, then the weight would be updated accordingly. And then he will again repeat the skinning process and see the results, check the results. Uh, so automatic methods to compute weights reduce this time uh, and effort needed in this process. The simplest set of weight are computed based on the distance between the control handles and the vertices of the reference model. Uh, rigid weight, uh, for example, uh, are the weights uh, which are set to one for handles, which is closest to the vertex. Uh, for any other handle, uh, the influence is set to zero. The weight is set to zero. So that way, only one handle is going to influence any vertex. As you can imagine that these weights are not going to be continuous uh, and we start to get artifacts at vertices uh, which are equidistant from two or more handles. 
Another type of weights are called inverse distance weights. For each handle, uh, the weights at a vertex vi is defined as the inverse of the distance between the handle and the vertex. And P varies uh, from one to infinity, whatever you want to take, uh, it will give you different variations. Now, in this case, uh, uh, the weight, uh, th these weights are going to have a global impact. Uh, for example, P1 will have some impact on the vertices, uh, maybe on the foot of the model, because uh, you will certainly get some distance between even and the vertex over here, and which is not desirable. Furthermore, um, um, the, the Cluden distance uh, between the handle and the vertex VJ, uh, it does not work well if, if we want to define a notion of closeness. Uh, uh, we can imagine that uh, even though the distance between point P1 and a point over here, uh, is small in the Euclidean sense, uh, Euclidean sense, but it's it's uh, it's a large distance uh, if we want to compute the distance on the shape. So in some sense, the weights are not shape aware, and to take the geometry of the reference model into consideration, uh, the geodesic distances are are used. Uh, sir. Hello. Yes. yes. Sir, a control center, all the points on skeleton, uh, right? So control handles is a generic term. Like, uh, so skeleton is one of them. So it's a set of uh, different sort of uh, um, elements. Like uh, you can define point as your control handles. You can define bones as your control handles. So that and should you, be a... if you. So that would be associated with skeletons, uh, is not necessarily. Is right? So, no. So you, uh, it's completely possible to define control handles without using any skeleton. So, like uh, uh, in this case, uh, you can see that there are only points, and it's a completely valid set of control structure. So, control hand. So uh, there might be confusion with the two terms. Control structure is. Uh, the overall structure, the overall caricature in some sense, uh, which is going to govern the motion. Control handles on the other hands are the elements. So like, uh, let me just see if I can. So it's like uh, points. Uh, uh, so you can use point handles to define control structures. Then, uh, so let me just go back. You, you can use point handles to define the control structures. Then you can combine these points with bones. So in this case, you have point uh, control handles as well as bone control handles. So it, it This is a case uh, where you are using both of them. Then you can define skeleton and you can also mix skeleton with point handles and other bones which are not connected to each other. A skeleton, in some sense, is one one unit where every bone is connected to every other. Uh, so every bone is connected to some other bone, and it's it's going to move in coherence in some sense. And on the top of it, you can also define the cage control structures. So, in some sense, all of these are control handles. Does this answer your query? Yes, sir. makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So overall, uh, uh, the skinning weights which we need uh, needs to have certain properties. First, uh, they should be continuous and smooth, and uh, gradually decrease from the control handles. Then, as we have discussed, they should be shape aware. And they should also be local and sparse. 
and by sparse uh, we mean that uh, only a small number of control handles should impact any given vertex and at last the weights should be non negative and bounded so negative weights are unintuitive in nature because uh, it's difficult to understand the implication of a negative weight so when you add or subtract negative weight in the scanning equation it doesn't make uh, uh, sense uh, and it's uh, it's difficult to predict how the model is going to behave then boundedness is important to preserve the shape of the reference model uh, in absence of any uh, deformation or transformation and boundedness is implied by the partition of unity which says that the sum of the weights at any vertex should be equal to zero it's not very difficult to understand uh, so this is your screening equation this is your screening equation so let's say that we apply same transformation on each control handle which is ti in this case so we can take ti out of this expression and now what we are left with is uh, sum of weights uh, multiplied to the transformation ti applied to vertex vi so we can write it in this expression and now if you take ti as identity that means there is no transformation being applied on the control structure so if you put ti equal to identity you are left with this expression and even though you don't have any transformation applied to vertex vi you are still going to get a scaling effect which is equal to this uh, scalar term being equal to the summation of these weights and which we don't want we we would ideally want that if there is no transformation applied to the control structures uh, we would want to preserve the shape right so that's why uh, we need to normalize the weights and this partition of partition of unity properties become important now based on these properties uh, weights can be computed using an energy minimization framework where a energy an energy is defined uh, uh, in addition to some constraint one can use a different type of energy functions one popular one is called laplacian function laplacian energy and you might have seen it in one of the earlier session in the summer course uh, intuitively minimizing this laplacian energy uh, is going to provide you smooth weight functions and other desired properties are added to the minimization function in form of constraint so we can add um, non negativity and bounded constraint and we can add a partition of unity constraint or uh, sparseness constraint for that matter uh, for our labs today uh, you have been provided with weights uh, computed using uh, this reference uh, which which we call bounded uh, by harmonic weights bbw for short and uh, these are nice weights which include all of these properties i'm not going to discuss it in more detail because it's a it's a topic in itself but if you are interested um, i mean a libigel function is also available to compute this waste if you want to try it out now let's talk about uh, the rep the representation and blending of transformations again uh, blending simply means uh, mixing or taking a weighted average of the transformation so in skinning uh, typically a rigid transformation is used uh, a rigid transformation consists of two parts one is a rotation transformation and one is a, uh, another part is the translation transformation so uh, given a point v we can rotate that point by applying a rotation transformation r followed by uh, a translation and we get our 
transform point uh, v dash alternatively a rotation and translation can be arranged in a four cross four matrix e which can be applied to a vertex uh, to uh, homogeneous representation of the vertex v v tilde now the translation can be represented using a vector in r3 and if uh, applied alone it's a very simple transformation to work with uh, one can linearly blend multiple translations but the case with the rotation on the other hand is not that simple and there are several ways to represent and blend the rotation transformations the simplest one being the Euler angles. Euler angles, uh, Euler angle representation consists of three rotations, theta x, theta y, theta z, around three mutually orthogonal axes. And typically, uh, the choice of these coordinate axes are x, y, and z, but you can take any mutually orthogonal axis. In literature, these rotations are also called roll, pitch, and yaw uh, due to their use in traditional navigation system. Euler angles are a popular way to represent rotation in navigation systems. Uh, it's easy to represent these rotation in matrix form uh, by Rx, Ry, Rz, and any general rotation can be represented as a composition of these matrices. But despite being compact and easy to represent, uh, easy to use representation, uh, Euler angles, uh, Euler angle representation is ambiguous in nature. Uh, by that I mean that for any general rotation, multiple Euler angle representation uh, exist, and um, hence usually Euler angles are avoided. There is one. Uh, interesting issue called gimbal uh, lock uh, which is uh, very famous for uh, very famous if you are working with Euler angle representations uh, in that case uh, in a certain configuration you lock a degree of freedom I'm not going to go into the details but uh, it's interesting it would be interesting if, uh, for some some of you to just go uh, to just check it out on the internet Another representation for uh, rotation is called axis angle representation. And as the name suggests, any rotation is represented by the axis of uh, the rotation and the angle of rotation theta. So axis of uh, rotation is represented by n and the angle is represented by theta. And using Roderick's rotation formula, uh, axis angle a representing a representation can be converted into a matrix form it's very easy to derive this formula and we are going to see a part of it uh, later in this session uh, note that this matrix and x is a skew-symmetric matrix defined as follows so for the moment we are just going to assume that we know uh, how to define a rotation using rodrix formula and move ahead with it and this is what we are going to start our lab with actually uh, and we are going to see the implication of it uh, i mean uh, in the lab itself so we now have all the concept needed uh, to implement our first uh, interactive shape deformation algorithm uh, which is going to be linear blend skinning and we are going to take a simple example for this case uh, so the example we are going to work with is uh, a simple object uh, which is a rectangular bar the control uh, for control handles we are going to take two points one is uh, uh, two points each uh, on one on each extreme of uh, the bar along the length then for these exam, uh, these control handles, uh, we need weight functions. One set of weight function has been provided to you, and 
another set of weight function you are supposed to compute. Then for each control handle, uh, we need to define transformations. Uh, for the lab assignment, we are going to just focus on rotation transformation. And then we need to perform linear blend scaling. So uh, I will now show you uh, how to run this. And after that, we are going to start our first lab session. Uh, in case you have any question, uh, you can ask now. Uh, sir, I have checked out that uh, the problem to follow the problem of gimbal lock, uh, there is a term called quaternions. So yeah, we will see, we will see it. We we are going to discuss quaternions uh, okay. later in this course. Sir, what is SO3? Okay, so SO3 is the group of all rotation transformations uh, represented as uh, a three by three matrix. So I, I'm, I don't know uh, if you are familiar with the uh, groups. Uh, are you familiar with groups? I have been introduced to it. Okay, so uh, it's like when you take uh, all possible rotations, there are certain properties uh, this set of uh, transformation can follow. And so, uh, rotation transformations, uh, if you take a set of it, they follow certain properties and that's why it's called, uh, um, it, uh, the, the term is uh, spatial uh, orthogonal group, right? Oh, so I mean, we are, yeah, we are not going to go into detail. I mean, uh, about the mathematics of the group. I just mentioned because uh, some of you might be from the mathematics background, and for them it might be interesting to see that, that there is a group into picture. But uh, today, I mean, I'm not going to use uh, uh, too complicated math words. I just want to focus on the implementation part, and which is what we are going to. So th there are a couple of tasks uh, which you need to perform. So I will just go through the entire file and let you know where, where you have to do uh, your task. So the first box over here is just the import of usual IGL and uh, some function from mass plot, uh, which we need to plot or display our results. Nothing major. Then in the second cell, it's more or less uh, reading of the mesh file. Uh, so V and F are going to represent your vertex array and uh, your face list. Then these are the handle indices, uh, one at the top and one at the bottom. And it doesn't matter which one is which, in this case, because it's very simple. So uh, these are the indices uh, of your vertex array V. So your handle points are V25 and V74. So you can plot uh, your mesh using the plot function, uh, which is given by IGL. So if you look at it, this is your rectangular mesh. Okay, then uh, you have weights. One particular type of weight function has been provided to you and which is the default setting. So if you load these weights, these, this is what you're going to get. And again, these are color coded. So you can see that uh, you can easily guess which one belongs to which handle. So. Uh, this is going to vary from, uh, so this is the highest point, this is the lowest point, so the handle should be somewhere here, and uh, same for the second weight. So the first task for you would be just to implement uh, the inverse distance weights over here, and then see how different uh, they look, I mean, uh, by plotting them. Then you need to implement Roderick's formula uh, to get uh, the uh, 
uh, rotation uh, you are going to specify a axis of rotation and uh, an angle for rotation and then this function should output a valid rotation and uh, i mean it's not very difficult uh, it's just a couple of line of course so just don't uh, feel that it's going to be too hard and most of the time i provided uh, relevant information which you might need uh, in order to implement things like uh, so this formula has been provided to you here and you can also check out the wikipedia page if you if you want to have if you want to go through more information then this is the function blend mat uh, which is uh, uh, a function for linear uh, blending of matrices and this is you, you are going to implement for your linear blend scaling if you uh, uh, if you have completed these tasks then you are going to use these two functions uh, in the skinning function so in the skinning function uh, you are going to take as input the set of vertices and the weights and the transformation and for transformation we are going to represent a transformation in the axis angle format first and then we are going to convert uh, these axis angle representation in the skinning function so in the skinning function you don't have to do anything uh, it will work just fine you just have to implement uh, the rodex formula function blend mat function and uh, the weight function and once you have this you can just run it uh, and once this part is okay you should be able to see your results and for the results you need to define the the input parameters so nh over here represents the number of handles uh, which we have already defined in the over here now uh, for handle transformations there are two handle transformation and it's easy to make sense of it uh, it's axis angle representation so the first parameter is your angle and then uh, rest three parameters are the axis of your rotation and uh, so if you, if you perform this uh, you should be able to see the result uh, at the moment you won't be able to see anything because uh, the task is not complete and i just want you to play around with uh, different configurations uh, of these input uh, parameters and see if uh, they make sense to you uh, as a last task you should just reproduce uh, uh, what we call the candy wrapper effect and we, uh, after this lab when we uh, when we are going to start our next session we are going to start uh, discussing about this candy wrapper effect so this is going to be our starting point for the next session okay so uh, uh, now you can start implementing it. I am available. If you have any doubt, you just uh, ask. Now, in the inverse distance ways, I guess uh, it's a couple of line of code which you need to uh, implement. Uh, I will, the important thing was that you need to compute the distance between uh, the the vertex and uh, the the handle and then so i will just show you different kinds of weight so maybe one would be just to say so one you have to implement let let me show you the rigid weights you can see that it's intuitive and uh, if you remember rigid weights uh, it was assigned so for every vertex the weight is assigned one only for uh, the handle which is uh, closer so in this case these vertices are closer to handle at the top and these vertices are closer to handle at the bottom so you get the respective weight functions then for uh, Rodrix formula, you need to define the skew symmetric matrix, and then it's just a 
simple formula so if you run this and then for blending you just need to blend transformation at each vertex according to their weights so again two lines of code here run this and then if you spinning part so this is the main part where you are mm, calling the skinning function with different parameters so this is going to be with by the way this is with rigid weights so as you can see that this is the result you are going to get and you can see that the object behaves uh, rigidly so the it, it treats the complete object uh, like it has two components but you can see that uh, the discontinuities uh, are creating artifacts so we are not we don't want this to happen so you can use different uh, transformation feel free to explore it and let me just show you the results with the uh, biharmonic weights These are the weights, and then if you run the same example, this is what you are going to get. Right. But uh, this is one particular case. Uh, you can, if you run the next uh, cell, uh, you will see that. This is what you are going to get, and we are going to discuss this uh, why <clears throat> why we are getting this and uh, what can we do to uh, rectify this. But for the moment, I just want you guys to just uh, uh, implement this and see. I mean, if you can make some sense out of it. Okay. I will share the code as uh, once the session is over. You can play with the code if you have not implemented it uh, yourself because in the next session we are going to build on this code. And if you haven't done it, so it won't be as interesting as it should be. So 